go after this stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You got to love it, ladies and gentlemen. You got to love it. It's got to be what you are supposed to do. You want to sing, and even though they want to invite you to Carnegie Hall, you're going to sing to anybody that listens to you, including singing to yourself. I used to talk to my plants when nobody else would listen to me. You got to write, even if no one published your book, write because that was given to you to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right. And it's worth it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to episode two of the Straight Shooting subsidiary of the Angel Road. God, I hate that. I'm not even going to. No, fuck that. You know what? I was going to start over, but fuck that too, man. We're not fucking starting over today. We're going to do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. This is fucking episode two of Straight Shooting. Another fucking part of the Angel Road Outdoors podcast community. Nah, nah, fuck that too. This ain't a community. It's just me. Whatever. It's episode two. The the episode that nobody fucking asked for. How's that? Nobody asked for this, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Because I thought it was interesting. And the reason I thought it was interesting is because when I was looking for things like the shit I'm about to share with you, I had to go digging in YouTube videos. And thank God Jason Strowski, Polak Outdoors, has Michigan Great Outdoors YouTube channel. Because that brother, who I really want to get on this podcast, uh, did some really fantastic unbiased gear reviews that helped me, you know, make a lot of great decisions. Um, another great decision I made was going to the Mobile Hunter Roadshow and sitting my fucking fat ass on a point five to make a determination on whether or not it was too small and whether or not I needed the extended post. Guess what? It ain't too small and I did need the extended post. So I recommend doing your due diligence when you're looking for gear to find the gear that works for you. And better yet, there is an incredible resale community on Facebook um, in the marketplace, not so much, but in certain Facebook groups, if you don't like something you bought, sell that bitch for just a little bit less than you bought for it. It doesn't sting as much and you can help somebody out who's looking for something that you've already tried and realized you don't like. And then th- Merry Christmas to them. They don't have to pay full price or relist at full price. I don't care, but this is the episode that nobody asked for. It's the gear that I When thinking long and hard about it, about a week ago, I wrote down all the things that were most important to me this year for hunting and what made me comfortable in the woods to sit long, to do what I needed to do, to be in the deer, to be in the correct tree when I needed to be in it um, comfortably for extended periods of time. And uh, I'm going to read them to you because that's what we do here. The number one thing on my list are pants. And I cannot stand camo pants. I can't fucking stand them. Not that I have always felt that way, but once I have gone to the other side, I have found that I don't like camo pants. I did not wear camouflage pants one fucking time this year. In fact, I think I wore dickies, black dickies that are probably 15 years old. 10 times? I don't know. I just don't wear camouflage pants. And for those of you that do, fine. I'm just telling you that I have found Wrangler ATG and Wrangler ATG fleece lined pants for late season are the absolute most comfortable pants per dollar that I think you can find on the market. And they will get torn up in the briars and they will get, you know, not as smooth as they once were. But God damn it, they are comfortable. They are light. The The regular ones are light enough for early season. And the fleece lined ones with a, a regular old pair of long underpants, long johns, are perfectly fine for late season. I also picked up a cheaper pair um, called the brand is called Full Blue. And I bought them at Walmart and they are fleece lined. But where I live, the gray color, the dark gray, the charcoal gray, 
matches the goddamn trees that I'm sitting in absolutely perfectly. My legs look like tree trunks, not in size, but in color when I'm wearing those pants. And I they have a nice um, like a tan, sandy tan color, um, you know, that I primarily used in the early season. But now that it's late season and the leaves are gone and now that there's some snow on the ground, these gray pants blend perfectly. And so that is my number one recommendation for pantaloons. Uh, the number one piece of equipment that I bought uh, more than anything else that has benefited me, my little pigs, when they get cold, are the number one thing that will make me get out of the stand. Freezing cold toes. My, my toes get cold and painful so quickly. And they will be the number one culprit for me talking myself out of getting down early and potentially missing out on an opportunity. Um, I would prefer to sit till 10 30 or 11. Um, but man, late season, if I got cold toes, bro, it doesn't work. So, um, electric socks, uh, they were the, the brand that I have are no longer available on, uh, Amazon, but there are so many that are similar. Um, they were under a hundred bucks. I want to say they were seventy nine ninety nine. Um, they have little teeny tiny batteries that tuck in a little pocket that you can charge in your USB charger in your in your car in between hunts. They charge quickly. They have three levels of intensity. So there's a there's an on and off button, and every time you hit the button, it changes the level of intensity of electricity coursing through the veins of your socks, and thereby. Uh, changing the intensity of heat that you feel. If you do it on the, I have never run out of battery. Let's just say that in a sit. So if I sit for four or five hours, um, I, I've never once depleted the batteries. So you can, um, but then again, I don't, maybe, you know, there are people that hunt in climates much colder than mine. Um, but as I will tell you later, I don't use highly insulated boots this year. And um, these, these heated socks have made it bearable. They are not going to keep you hot and toasty, but they will take the edge off of those painfully told cold toes uh, that you'll get late season in uh, the stand. Um, so heated socks, electric socks, you cannot wash them in the washing machine or dry them. So you have to hand wash them, which is a bitch, especially late season, because early season, I can hang shit outside and that shit dries quickly. Late season, like I just did, um, I had to hand wash them in the house and then I had to get a fire going upstairs and uh, set them in front of the fireplace, and it took like 36 hours for them to dry. That's dumb. I guess I probably could have put them on my boot dryer. But anyway, uh, electric socks. To me, that is my game changer. Electric fucking socks. And I'm going on year two with them. Uh, I have those Arctic Shield boot covers. I didn't like them last year. I would give them another chance, but I just didn't give them enough of a chance. Maybe I will this weekend or next week when it's like, one degree here uh, but electric socks that is my if i could put a pin on it and um buy 50 of you a christmas present um a new year 2024 present that would be it. electric socks for the for the lot of you uh and now we're gonna be speaking of feet let's move on to boots because these are critical to me so i have old man feet i have let me rephrase that i have old man foot so here's what happened last year i got uh, private access to a public piece. Um, and when doing scouting, I jumped a Creek landed wrong on my left ankle and I, I had to have broken it. I, I had to have broken this ankle. I'm way back in the woods and I thought I was going to die. Not really, but I was a little worried. Um, and so then I don't, I'm not a doctor guy. Like I don't go to the doctor unless I'm really having a hard time like, when they had to cut my eyeball open six times and do uh, retina surgery, I went to the doctor, but more often than not, I'm not going to the doctor and it's just a fucking ankle. Like I've rolled my ankle numerous times. So I'm, this one probably broke. Um, I'll probably forever have problems with it, but it seems fine now. But while it was healing, I overcompensated with my right foot. And I think in doing that, uh, created another problem that I'm still wrangling, wrestling with now, which is called plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is a tightness of the plantar fascia in the arch of your foot, and it is fucking excruciating. 
and there's lots of ways you can fix it. One of them is by surgery, but like I just said before, I'm not a doctor's guy, so I'm not going to the doctor. But you, I, you can make it more manageable by stretching and uh, comfortable footwear. And so I buy uh, orthotic shoes, <laughs> kind of, sort of. I buy Hoka tennis shoes, which are like walking on a fucking cloud. And um, and then I was like, what do I do for hunting? I need something that feels like a tennis shoe, but is durable like boot. Soft like shoe, tough like boot. Uh, and I purchased this year some Under Armour boots from Bass Pro Shop. They are light, flexible like a tennis shoe. They are water resistant. They are not warm, but they're worth it. Uh, they are the Under Armour Under Armour Micro G Valsets Reaper. Uh, that's the model, the make and model. And um, they were about 150 bucks at Bass Pro. And I can promise you that I only wore my muck boots, not muck brand, but like my muck boots, my big tall rubber boots, one time, two times this whole year. Uh, once in Kansas after I stepped in a mud hole and once the other day here in Michigan because I knew it was going to be wet. Um, but otherwise, I wear these uh, these super low insulated, flexible Under Armour boots all the time with. Uh, oh, and, and one thing I put into practice this year was was taking a second pair of socks. So after my hike to the stand, my feet are wet and they will inherently become excessively cold due to that reason. And so at the base of my tree, I will actually take my wet soaking, my, my swampy socks off, put them in my, my backpack and put a dry pair of boots on before I climb up into the tree. That and also that second pair of socks being my heated socks, I have been able to hunt all of 2023 with these light insulate, lightly insulated Under Armour boots. And I cannot recommend them enough. They are so godforsaken comfortable for hiking, scouting, um, you know, hill country, flatland ag country. Um, I have one beef with them and that it is like they are a magnet to mud. Like I have other boots that don't pick up mud like these do, but these sons of bitches grab mud and collect it like a hoarder on the Discovery Channel. Good Lord, they collect the mud, uh, but they're extremely comfortable. Like I said, coupled with electric heated socks in my opinion, you're good to go all fucking year long. We're about to find out, though, because it's really going to get cold here, and I may have to uh, employ the Arctic Shield boot covers, but uh, that has yet to be seen. This is my first season with the Under Armour, boot, Under Armour boots. I'm not affiliated with anybody. I have no affiliation other than myself, and I'm just sharing with you what I found worked really well this year. Name brands, brand names have nothing to do with anything. It's just my opinion. Uh, moving on, if you are going to be a mobile hunter and you have thought about saddle hunting, I say do it. I find great comfort in using a saddle. I have never, once I got all my uh, stuff situated and ropes tucked correctly, and um, it is, I'm always comfortable. And I know it's, see, I, and I'm a stander. I don't ever. I never sit. I, I never sit down. I never put my knees against the tree. I'm I'm standing the whole time. And I will stand for four and five hours at a time. I, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, but God damn it. Get yourself a nice one. Don't skimp. If you have to buy a couple of them and then sell the others that you don't keep, do it. Read reviews. Do your research. Figure out if a big guy's reviewing it or a skinny guy's reviewing it. Look at their waistline. Are they a chubbo? If a chubbo is, is, is giving you a review on a saddle and he says it's comfortable, it probably is comfortable. If it's a little scrawny guy that uh, looks like he eats Cheeto, chili cheese Fritos and a Mountain Dew for breakfast every day, he has no idea what it's like to be a size 36 waist and wear a saddle uh, for extended periods of time. So do your research, watch several videos, listen to lots of people's opinions on them before making a selection, but don't be afraid to spend a few hundred dollars on a quality saddle, a appropriately, appropriately sized dump pouch, and nice uh, ropes. Um, I have the, uh, I personally got for my birthday several years ago, 
the Latitude Method Classic. Yes, they are a Michigan brand. No, I have no affiliation, but yes, I love it. It is incredibly comfortable all the time. Um, and when you get it, figure out your system. And what I mean by that is organize your dump pouch on the side of your body that the hand that is most free will be able to use it. And then layer within the dump pouch the pieces or the components as they will come out in your ascension, your ascent. I don't know if ascension is probably not the correct word. During your ascent and conversely, your descent. So as I stand at the base of the tree, I put my initial stick at the at the bottom level of the tree, my first stick. And then I stage my next two steps, uh, sticks onto my saddle. Um, I stage my platform onto one of the molly hooks on the back, put my backpack on, and then I pull from my dump pouch my lineman's belt. I wrap it around the tree, and I begin to climb. I get to the top of my first step, I mount my second step, and then if need be, my third step. And when I get to my third step, I reach in my dump pouch and there, oh, also on my dump pouch is my bow rope. So before I start climbing, I tie my bow to uh, my bow toe rope, uh, which is just paracord and a carabiner. Once I get to the top of my sticks, the, my desired height, I will reach my left hand into, so I have my dump pouch on the left because, um, because I'm a left-handed archer. And so I have the bow on my right. And so I don't want to bonk. I don't want to be, don't want to be bonking my pouch, if you know what I'm saying. So, uh, I reach in with my left hand and I grab my cam buckle strap and then I uh, attach my platform to the tree. And then I get all the way up to my platform and I settle in while still being attached to my linesman's rope, my lineman's rope. I will set my tether on the tree without attaching it to my bridge. Then I will reach in and uh, to my dump pouch and I will grab my gear strap and hang it on the tree. And then I will take my backpack off and hang it from the gear strap. Finishing install while I'll finish installing my camera arm. I will uh, pull my bow up and get it set on my bow hanger. I will get everything set before I reattach myself to my to my tether. Once I am done setting up my tree, uh, I will se- I will hook my tether up to my bridge. I will take my lineman's belt and disconnect it, my lineman's rope, disconnect, and then tuck it back into my uh, dump pouch. So I think it's really important that you understand your system and then you layer it according to the way that you do things. And I don't think I always did it that way, but after so many times up and down the tree, I just realized it has to be this way for me to be effective, efficient. And so that's just how it is. Every time, every time my shit goes, comes out of my dump pouch that way. And then, and then in reverse, I come down the tree, the exact opposite. I mean, exact. And everything goes back in that dump pouch layered so that when I climb next time, it's exactly where I need it to be. So I'm not digging around, rooting around in there for anything, uh, in the dark. Um, Again, I think that's incredibly valuable to spend a little bit of money on a nice product that you're going to be sitting your butt in for several hours at a time um, anywhere around. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm not a, I decided that I'm not a flannel guy. I don't like the flannel options. I don't like the cost. I don't like the bulk. I don't like uh, a lot of things about it. And so I wanted to go sort of monotone or more neutral colors, which is how I ended up at those Wrangler pants, how I ended up at some olive colored hoodies and dark gray hoodies, um, monotone colored heavyweight flannels from legendary whitetails, I think. Um, and I also took advantage of a Father's Day sale two years ago. So it must have been la- not this year, but it must have been last year uh, at Womo. Outdoors, I think it is. Maybe it's just Womo. It's U-O-M-O. I bought the H1 flannel, which is outrageously expensive, but I got a $50 off coupon for Father's Day, made it a little more manageable, but I swear to God, I have not had to wear a jacket since I bought that flannel. It is like a jacket. 
In fact, while rolled up, you could probably assault a troublemaker. Uh, if someone was breaking into your house and you happen to have your Womo H1 flannel laying around, you could theoretically hit them with it and probably render them unconscious while you disarmed them and called the authorities. This thing is heavy duty. It is that monotone color, greenish, tannish, whatever. Um, pockets are great. It is designed to be rolled up and then snapped, closed, and stored. It's really, really, really functional. It's comfortable. I wouldn't say that it's very quiet, but it is exactly perfect for what I want it for. It. I do recommend sizing down a size. So I typically wear an extra large. I bought a large. It's perfect. I can wear... Um, I'll layer it as such. So like uh, I'll walk to the tree stand with a uh, with a uh, base layer on and a light hoodie. And if I'm sweaty, I'll change it at the base of the tree. I will then put on a, a dry base layer. And then I will put on my Huntworth um, hoodie until I get cold, like really cold. And then I'll put this this flannel on. And so very little bulk. And that keeps me plenty warm at my core, um, even in uh, December and January here. Again, it's not horribly cold yet. So this could, I could have to add to that, like a, maybe a, a heavier weight hoodie or something. But I my core isn't what really gets cold. It's my toes and my fingers. So again, I cannot recommend enough the Womo H1 flannel. You know, the, the cost is what it is for a quality outerwear, but it rolls up perfectly for storage and transport has the perfect amount of pockets and it's perfect for late season with layers uh, if you want to avoid that bulk. I have never once thought to myself, I sure hope my sleeve doesn't get caught in my bowstring. Like it's just absolutely perfect. And that's not me stroking the dick of the lone wolf guys. It's me telling you that I bought an expensive product and use it all the time and it is exactly as good as advertised and has been worth every penny. Uh, moving on, another one that I found is really important to me is this external power pack. So I'm somebody who has never thought about that in the past where I would just drain my batteries dead. Um, and then I went to Kansas and realized I'm in the middle of nowhere. What the fuck am I going to charge this shit with except for going back to my truck and driving around for an extended period of time? So I bought a two for 20 external power pack. Um, now I've got several of them. Um, cause people give them as gifts at work and stuff. And so here I am, I have, I have a few now, like I said, they were two for $20 on Amazon. The brand is M I A D Y. I don't know how the fuck you pronounce that. Whatever you want. It's 10,000 milliamp hours. Um, it charges relatively quickly and it recharged my phone extremely quickly. It recharges my camera's lithium batteries, like my camcorders lithium batteries and it's it's fucking awesome man and i gave one i gave the other one to my brother again if you're going to find yourself in these outdoor adventures miles away from your vehicle or help um at least make sure that your fucking phone can be charged so that you can call for help should you need it like when you jump over a creek and break your fucking ankle and nobody knows where you're at It'd be nice to have power wouldn't it uh moving on next uh bk outdoors another michigan company the jawbone bow hanger, uh, bow hook for your gear strap. So I had some uh, 3D printed stuff that I didn't care for. And um, BK Outdoors over there makes this the jawbone, which just kind of you feed your strap through it and uh, it hangs and it is badass. Simple design. Um, I bought a couple of them, gave one to my brother and absolutely love it. I've never once been concerned that my bow was going to fall off of my gear strap like I have in the past. So can't, I uh, cannot recommend that enough as well. The jawbone from BK outdoors stealth strips, no fucking exceptions. I don't want to hear shit about hockey tape and this, that, and the other shit. I, there is no fucking way that your stupid ass hockey tape is as quiet or soft or sound deadening as stealth strips. There, I said it stealth strips Buy yourself a roll today. Again, I'm not affiliated with anybody. Just fucking buy it, man. Stop being a, a, a stop being a tight wad and just buy yourself a roll of stealth strips and you'll understand. Um, backpack. This was something that I struggled with intensely when I first decided to be a mobile hunter. The right size pack 
for all of my shit and yet not too much of a pack and not too little of a pack so that it looked like the little kid from a Christmas story walking down the fucking sidewalk in a winter storm. I didn't want it to be bulging like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I wanted it to be accurately or adequately stuffed, have everything in it I need, and not have to go, well, I guess I'll just have to take this out. And I have found the XOP Striker Pack to be the perfect sized pack for me. Now, I have a K's, a Trophy Line K's pack, which I thought was going to be the pack for me. It seems like it's got all the shit, but it's fucking giant. And um, it just sits in my uh, it sits in my shop in thinking that someday I may use it and someday I might. But for right now, I'm not the XOP striker pack, which I'm, I got to tell you, I'm not 100 percent sure it's available anymore. I can carry uh, self filming gear, a backup, you know, two to three. Uh, t- I'm sorry, two headlamps, two releases, my license, my rangefinder. My wind detector, my glasses, a limb saw, a bottle of water, um, a grunt tube, extra cam buckle straps, a gutting knife, a pair of gloves, fingerless gloves, a neck gaiter. Um, what else do I have in there? A backup cotter pin for or a backup quarter inch pin for my point five. Um, what else do I have in there? What else do I have in there? Oh, I can also carry extra batteries. It just ropes and straps and all that. Everything you could possibly need. I have that in there. Plus, it has two straps on the bottom for me to attach my uh, Womo H1 flannel to, which is insanely perfect. Um, and it has some crisscross. It has some straps on the front that I can crisscross and I can actually attach three Latitude Carbon Speed Series sticks uh, and a Lone Wolf Fix platform that I have tighten strapped together. I can strap that to the front of the pack and carry it all into my tree stand if if I'm saddle hunting because I'll wear my saddle. And if I'm if I'm going to actually tree stand hunt, I can, you know, I have a Lone Wolf 0.5 and the seat X is a shelf. I can actually put that backpack with all the same shit in it except for the, you know, platform and sticks. Um, and then I will strap that to the stand itself and carry that all in. And so I'll have the 0.5 two 17 inch double steps with each one with an aider and then my backpack and all my shit. And again, I'm wearing my saddle. So the XOP striker pack is the perfect size. I don't have the cubic inches, but it's easy to figure out online. If that's something you're interested in, I'm sure you can find one secondhand. I'm sure you can find something comparable, but if you want to see what the straps are, where they're located and how they're oriented, I, in my opinion, the striker pack uh, knocked it out of the park. Um, And I don't think it was over a hundred bucks. I think it was a moderately priced. In fact, it might have been under 90 bucks. It might have been under it might have been like $79 when I bought it. It was it was pretty affordable. I was rather surprised. Uh and then the last thing on my list um there's so many things you could put on a list like this. So many. But these are all the things that I have thought about frequently as things that I have used a lot that are worth that I have found great value in that I thought was worth mentioning. And it is an affordable but effective pocket knife. And that may seem like a no-brainer to a lot of people, but I have mine pop out of my pocket all the time based on how I'm climbing things, like my thigh. Uh, they call me Billy Ray Thyrus or Thiley Cyrus over here. Uh, it will actually pop my knife out of the pocket, and it'll I'll just lose it. And so I don't want to spend a shitload of money on them. So what I have found is that... Um, I keep buying the same knife over and over and over. I probably bought 20 of them from Amazon because I lose them a lot. It is a TAC Force. So T-A-C Force TF723BL. And it is a flipper style, meaning you hold the base of the knife in the palm of your hands. And with your index finger, you hit a knob and it flips open the blade. Um, It's it's very sharp. Um, it has saw teeth in it. I have used that thing so fucking much, but they're only like $12. If that, honestly, they might be 10 bucks, but I usually buy two at a time and, um, I have a backup in the truck and I have one on me at all the time and they're easily resharpened. They are effective. They are lightweight. They have that little knob on the end. Should you have to break yourself out of your car? 
Um, they also have this little hook on the end if should you have to cut yourself out of your seatbelt in a car accident or cut somebody else out of a seatbelt. So it is a very useful multi-purpose pocket knife that I have found to be incredibly valuable and beneficial on multiple occasions over the last several years, and I cannot possibly recommend it enough. Um the Tack Force flipper style uh, pocket knife from Amazon. So that's it. And that's my list that nobody asked for. Um, I'm banking this one in case I don't feel good because I feel it coming on. Everybody in my house has been sick but me. And it's coming, bitch. I can fucking feel it and I don't like it. So anyway, if I don't talk to you on a brand new regular episode next week, this one will come out on Tuesday. Otherwise, um, thanks everybody for listening. We will talk to you soon. See ya.